Hello and welcome back, mateys. We are sailing on the open seas and looking for a bounty or whoever we can find or maybe some islands. Like literally anything that's not the sea. Not that I don't like the sea, but hey, sometimes you need more than the sea. We're all working with injury. Yeah, that's not the best. Plague ship again? Oh, okay, let's check it out. On the horizon, a ship comes into view. It sails furled. The ship lists upon the water. Plague ship! George the Red Handed cries out from the four finger jabbing skyward, indicating a green flag uh, billowing lazily in the breeze on the ship's main mast. Irina strains at the railing to see the ship. Are we going in, Captain? It would be. It could be they have something worth uh, trading for. Yeah, it could be. We all end up with the pox, Jordan the Red Handed Motors. We don't have the spyglass. Alright, pull alongside it. A crew grides your ship next to the plague vessel. The deckhands and the captain appear shocked and apprehensive. Hylia's mercy, the captain blurts out, his voice raspy. I didn't think anyone would come to our aid. Deckhands uh, stand tall, but their unsteady posture betrays the sickness that seemed to have affected them all. Uh, why have even... well, if... well thing is why have the plague flag up hmm what are you people afflicted by if you really well I suppose they are looking for help anyway and they want uh, good folk to stay away that cannot help or unwilling what are you people afflicted by call for the sickest sailor from your crew we will bring them aboard Examine them and provide suitable remedies. No, that's not what we're gonna do. Board and loot the ship. In this shape, they're defenseless. Take them for all they're worth. Uh, what are you pe people afflicted by? Some of my sailors have taken up the gut rot. We know it's it isn't fatal on its own, but we can we can't sail while they are barely standing. The captain surveys the sick crew. It's sympathetic eyes, not safely anyway. There's nothing to be done here. Steer clear and let's be on our way. Irina shrugs and sighs, but Beldul nods approvingly. A wise decision, Captain. The crew steers clear of the plague ship and sails on until it disappears on the horizon, on the receding horizon. Well, basically, they gotta be fine. But come on. He, he literally said that they're gonna be fine. Whoa, you hate me? Ratun? Who are you? Who are you affiliated to? Ratun. Oh, they're level 14. Alright, let's fight. You guys wanna fight? We fight. I don't know how you make a lot of money in this game. <laughs> I really don't. I guess we could sell more stuff, but still. Not like uh, the kind of stuff I have is worth a lot. Whoa, what the hell is going on here? There are not that many people here, but they are big. Rotom Raider, they are resistant to inf intellect afflictions, resolve afflictions, and they are weak to frost. Is that so? But we can't intellect afflict them or resolve afflict them. Which is kind of bad. But they might not like this whole freezing pillar thing that I'm, I like using. Wait a second, they're using the wrong thing. Okay, this is it, more like it. Freezing pillar number one. Freezing pillar number two. Actually, we don't have a number two. We can only have number one. Right, so they really don't like the frost, right? Yeah, they, they sucked. <laughs> well... I really want to take their ship. How could we not take their ship? 
That's the pirate way. Like, like the game Pirates. You always take the ship, right? Ratus are... St I don't know where they're coming from, but they kind of hate me. Okay, Ratus, you wanna fight me? We'll fight. And I just wanna skip the whole uh, mini game. We're just gonna go straight to the fighting. Yeah, I can't expect them more ratoons this time, but looks seems like one more. Ah, uh, sure. I'll uh, maybe hold the formation for now. They have very high will and fortitude, but rather low reflex. So the chill fog is not gonna be that good, despite them taking extra damage from, well, or like high damage from uh, frost. Now nah, they're just gonna die. They're yeah, not that good. I don't know why they are so aggressive. So... Ashen Ma. Do I wanna go here? Yeah, the Mura is just going down all the time. By the, because the crew is injured. What? More Ratoon? What is this? I really know nothing about these Ratoon. Other than they... I really think that they have my number. When we show up, they always have nothing. They always die super fast. I don't really mind it. But... It's a bit weird. Do a freezing pillar. Oh, flame color. So low reflex, low deflection. Ah, uh, can you just do a heal? Not sure what you're waiting for, but definitely healing top priority. Yeah, the low deflection is really hurting them. I suppose, uh, well, any kind of team that really relies on uh, basic attacks uh, is gonna... Like an uh, opponent with uh, low deflection. Shipwreck? Check it out. Sound Scorch Valley. Loot. What the hell is up with... This place. The blank sands stretch uh, towards the thin line of the sea on the horizon, broken on occasion by jagged stone spires that jut from the earth. You notice movement among a jumbled group of rocks ahead. A group of Eoten are lunging among the stone pillars. One of the two headed beasts trousers, its eyes closed. Its chin, its chin's dropping against its wiry hair chest. A second sits upon, sits upright in the sun, covering its legs in sand. It's, it pats the sand, pecking it with heavy palm. Though it seems engrossed in its efforts, you suspect that its four eyes provide it, it excellent peripheral vision. 
Uh, third beast scratches its back with a broom, yawning with one cavernous mouth as the other snores quietly. You don't see any other Eotan, but there could be others lurking among the stone spires. <sighs> Do we wanna learn about the life of the Eotans more? Let's draw my weapons and attack. One day in the life of the Eotans. They seem to be pretty aggressive toward me. Uh, well, said the guy who attacked the Eotan right now, but like... I have not met a friendly Yotan yet. Oh, there seems to be one more. Not like it's gonna matter too much. They have low reflex. So this is gonna completely own them. Blind the Yotan. It should work on some of them at least. They have a lot of. Yeah, they're very wounded. It's really nice to finish them off. Wow. Yelton down! Is that it? Street sweeper. Sure. Great. Actually, I do enjoy uh, giving the characters AIs. When I first played Pairs of Eternity, uh, the first one, Obviously, this is the first time I'm playing the second one. Uh, I actually played without AI, because it was not even an option. But I played with AI, and I, I did prefer to play with AI. Actually, we're gonna check out the camp. I like to focus on the meaningful decisions. Uh, well, maybe not automate everything, but like... Limit the decisions and just focus on the meaningful ones, rather than like make all the decisions myself, even the ones that are completely trivial. Uh, Kopaha's Fang? Oh yeah, I had a feeling that we were missing something here. Before you rises a steep mountainside, rubble and uh, scrub brush block your path, but boulders and areas of erosion might also provide you with ample handholds. Scale the mountainside! You begin an arduous climb up the side of the mountain. Soon you come across a small flat ledge on the mountainside. You pull yourself over the edge. A naga in colorful regalia stands on the ledge, arms raised over a, a dida, del, del, over a weird totem. The naga catches sight of you and rears back, letting out a long, high-pitched hiss. Throw an explosive at the totem, draw your weapons. Let's blow up the totem. Actually, we suck at that. You do it, okay? Adair whips the explosive toward the totem, but it doesn't throw it fast enough. It detonates in the air. A high-pitched sc screech echoes across the mountainside. A horde of bats burst from the small holes in the mountainside. Fails. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> it's, there should be a name here. Nobody fails to duck in time and takes the bat's head on. Exactly. Nobody tumbles to the ground and lands uh, hard on the pile of jagged rocks. The naga begins to chant in a deep, lisping voice, screeching bats with smoldering wings swarm in a cloud over your head, then descend upon you. Alright. 
maybe that was a bad call. Who knows? One for sure, we're not gonna get killed by bats. Not after all this time. We're just gonna take out the bats. Come on, they're just bats. Let's be real here. Maybe one one Naga, but like one Naga with like a bunch of bats. What? You call those bats? What's going on here? Maybe do uh. Let me just do a pillar. Why? Why are you not doing that? Whoa! I there. What the hell? Totally unexpected. Why do you do that? Positioning it there would be very good. You guys just run in, ran into the frost. It's kind of crazy. Blame Naga Sorcerer. Alright, Sorcerer. Thing isn't doing the job. Rip. Blame bad. You wanna die? <laughs> Superb one-handed flail that deals extra burn damage. Okay. That's it. We can leave. There's no nothing problem. else here. This is just a battle zone. There's nothing to loot here. Climb the mountain again. Enter the cave. You make your way into the cave. Well, we already killed all the Nagas and the bats, so this should be a uh, smooth sailing. And we already know that we can climb the mountain, so that's cool. Uh oh. <laughs> Nag Marauder. Very high fortitude. <laughs> These things are. seem to be strong. Protect the trap? It's hardly surprising. Um, yeah, I mean, no, okay, the Marauder can run into it, but the team should disarm the ta trap. I guess we gotta run in. Oh yeah, we actually got rid of the fire, so that's good. And those tentacles were good for something. They are distracting the archers. Can see. I can't drop it there. You have an injury. This thing isn't doing the job. Alright, she's the one who's tanking now. Not great. Can we just do another heal? Apparently it's happening. Okay, it's actually pretty good because we didn't heal the Naga. That was the goal. Uh oh, she's 
taking damage. Let's try to terrify them. I work. At least it worked on one of them. Alright, let's just blow a pillar. Actually, it doesn't matter anymore. The Nag Marauder still needs to be killed. Great sword two handed. But only fine? That's rather disappointing. Superb war bow. That's a little bit better. I'm kinda hoping for sure. legendary. I guess they used two fine swords. What's going on here? Uh oh. Maybe this is the time to run back. Let them rush in. I might just, as well just drop a pillar over there. Uh, on all of them. This thing isn't doing the job. Oh boy, do the heal, do the heal. Do the heal. Oh, what? It didn't work? Do it, do it again. Are we in trouble? So he's dead. Okay, let's terrify them. Why didn't work? It got cancelled. Maybe after this we're gonna rest. Okay, that should take him out. Let's do a chili fog. Do a lot. Maybe blind the needy guys as well. Uvala. Oh, no, taking a lot of damage. Alright. But we need to rest. Fine Nag Sword. Super Quarter Staff. That's just that's just dead. Grand's Bloodfire. Okay. No yeah, that's just garbage. Let's rest. Let's rest up. And we're gonna go deeper into the temple. Uh oh. Yourself a look at that, mate. Whoa, okay. Legendary. Now, this is what I'm talking about. All firepower levels, damages burn. Okay, that's pretty good. We got a legendary weapon, finally. Magrin's Favor. Firepower levels? That's not too relevant unless we're dealing with the Fire Mage, and the Fire Mage would use that less. Just for hitting. Still, would be pretty good. 2130? Anyone wants to use that? It's possible that the uh, axe is just uh, straight up worse. He uses one hander. I know that not all of us have that uh, skill picked up. Yeah, I think uh, Seraphin has it. She doesn't have it. Soti, I think she has it, yeah. Soti and Seraphin has it. So, question is, which one of them will use it? 2131, Superb Saber? Or... I 
Um, I'm sure I'm looking at the weapons. Oh, never mind that. That was the that was the <laughs> second page. Twenty one thirty two. Twenty eight thirty eight, of course. Maybe try that. She's gonna use that fire ma magrant's f uh, favor axe. She might even uh, appreciate the lower. Uh, she uses those uh, melee weapons right now, and she just switches to sword and board when she needs to. What the hell is that? Pet. Burn armor rating. For the entire team. Okay. Thanks for that. Isn't this a special secret door? No, it's not. You must gather your party before venturing forth. I know. <laughs> Island name. I'm gonna call it Snakes. Perfect uh, name for an island. People just uh, come by here and say like, there are no snakes here. Like, but then they meet the Nagas and they're gonna have a bit of a gotcha moment. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Ratoon. Again. I don't know who that where these ratoon. They they really hate me. They always attack me. Seems like do we have reputation with them? Can I change my reputation with them? Because they just wanna attack me. Always. We'll wreck you from stem to well whatever I said before. I forgot. I I couldn't even read it in time. Drop down the pillar. Blindy fog. Okay. So, this seemed to be blocking. The progress that way. Then we can go to Ashen Ma. Maybe we're just gonna go around. Another plague ship. Can we just go close to them? We're gonna pull alongside them. As your crew guides your ship next to the afflicted craft, the captain stumbles over. A spear of bright, uh, white bone obtrudes from the side of her neck. Gods, she raps. You here to help? You look down and see that the joints of her wrist and ankles are reared with similar eruptions, the skin around her wounds red and weeping. Only one other deckhand gets to his feet. His throat is almost entirely enclosed by a necklace of bone. Spears pushing uh, through his skin. We can trade if you can. We have a pair of enchanted gloves, supplying quick. He leans heavily against the mast. His breath comes shallow and fast through the strange bone growths. The captain frowns. Thank you, Roko. I know what those mean to you. The mate dips his chin, and an heirloom not worth much to a corpse. There's nothing to be done here. 
See you guys later. So basically, either they are so uh, sick that we don't want to deal with them, or they are not that sick and we still don't want to deal with them and they're just gonna get better on their own. Because we are not really in the... Well, in the, in the, in the really power to help them. Like, do we have a medic? I kind of... Maybe, maybe do we have a medic, so... But... I don't know. I would rather send the medic over. If he wants to go. Probably he doesn't. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Shipwreck. Uh, yep. We're just gonna loot it real quick. Anything over here? Scoria. What about that? It looks so shiny, but seems like there's nothing you can do there. Are we already entering it? Or is this gonna be a text adventure? I suppose we'll see. I said no to talk. The drowned barrows are closed. An elderly dwarf folds her arms, her disapproving frown warping the tattoos that encircle her face. If you want to join your son, you can offer yourself to Nemnok next season. Um... I, I don't wanna get into this weird uh, thing you guys going on here. Offer yourself to Nemnok? There, there has to be a better way to put that. They, did I miss Nemnok offering this uh, season again? An outlander. Teta goes a starry eyed with awe, uh, but a hard look from Annex silences him. Tatok, you will not speak to outlanders if they mock our ways. <gasps> she raises an admonishing a finger, leaving you in the periphery. If you. Need to be like dead serious about your ways, uh, then those those ways suck. Simple as that. You can be serious about something, but you have if you have to be solemn about that. What are we even talking about here? You would defend broken traditions. They do not serve us anymore. Hey, Tetak, don't take this as a way to that I'm trying to break your traditions. I've just I've just tried to. Uh, Start the conversation in a light-hearted way, okay? Our elders crossed the land bridge to protect their children. You disgrace their memory feeding our young to the mountain Anik. The auburn bearded dwarf waves toward an imposing peak on the horizon, its cliff face shaped like a leering skull. Nemnok will release my son, or... or perish! Tatok utters the words in a hate-filled whisper that causes Anik to hiss uh, through her teeth. What happened to your son? Kali sacrificed himself for the good of the tribe, right, Tatok? That's retarded. Okay. Tatok, you're the one in charge. Who are who are we killing here? Ah. Uh, I lived a full life in the shadow of the barrows. Kali deserves the same. If you reject Nemnok's accord, then you are truly lost. May Kali find peace in the embrace of the mighty one. Hey, Anik, I'm not past killing some old woman. Anik grits her teeth and marches across the settlement, turning her gaze to linger on the distant outline of the mountain. You know, what you believe in is your own damn business, I don't care. But you're still responsible for your actions, okay? I spit on Nemnok. That guy's seemingly awfully cool with the situation. That talk? What the hell? Some ink must have leaked through Anik's skull if she thinks I'll stand idly by. Watch out! A free-headed damn rock! No, no, no. It's probably not appropriate. Leaning for a better look at the engraving. The runes are in uh, Nasitak language, at least half of which spell out a litany of violent and colorful curses. The chisel goes askew and drains and draws a harsh line across the iron. Tadok's eyes twitches. Ah, there goes the rest of my day. 
What do you want, Outlander? Interesting set of armor you got there. <laughs> Junvik tradition. The names of friends and foes are engraved on its hide. He bangs on his chest, grinning broadly. Been with the tribe for generations. Good armor remembers. What was the argument about? Our chieftain offered my Kali to the drowned barrows. Tatak spits on his armor and rubs hard at the chisel mark. Nimnok accepted him. An honor to some, a tragedy to me. Nemnok? Is this Nemnok actually a person? Or just a chieftain said that Nemnok accepted your son. Sacrifice. Tatak sighs and wipes his brow with the back of his hand. What's Nemnok? God of the island. A great terror of a being, but kind to us when we follow the rules. He shakes his chisel at the stone idol in the center of the village. A false god, you mean? Salty, all gods are false. Basically, it just describes more powerful beings. If they require to be worshipped or like they punish you, then they're just your enemy. Don't be idiot. He's not perfect, but he's our god. Lance. Probably I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that as like uh, just. Okay, that 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 was not how I wanna talk to Soti. That was more like just saying it as a joke. I wouldn't say that out of RP. He's not perfect, but he's our godless. Not perfect. His likeness is the most any of us have seen. We only meet his ogre minions who guard the isle. The ogre children minions? we send, they face him in the mountain. Are you sure that the ogres are not just eating your children? This Namnok lives in the Drowned Barrows. Aye, there in the big mountain. Mighty Nemnok's Hall of Power. He nods toward the distant peak. Nemnok and the ogres watch over our tribe. Keep us safe. But the cost. I've heard nothing about the new god. This might bear a closer look. Nemnok sure takes like a god. He demands readers, scribes, anyone handy with ink and quill. My Kali had the misfortune to be born clever. Not not like anyone <clears throat> not unlike anyone around here, I, I see. You Did you say you'd go to the Mountain of Power? Would you find my boy while you're there? Yeah. We send other tithes to the mountain as well. Gold, gems, items of power, if such things interest you. Such things do interest me. If you can help me and help yourself in the process, so much the better. Tatak breathes a sigh of relief. Next time it'll be Nemnok who pays. Alright. Gable, who the hell are you? Outsider, you come for food? You look awfully fancy. As yep. you wish. Nature's embrace. Ugh. Never mind that. I just realized that I do not come for food. Orphan dog. Oh, that'll be. I'll take it. Anik. I'm not gonna kill Anik. I'm gonna bring back the boy. Maybe not bring back the boy. We're just going for the riches. Well, you can't really have a mindset that you're just uh, thinking about the outcome. You can only uh, think about your intentions and your actions, but yeah, the, the outcome is not guaranteed, I suppose. I suppose neither your actions, but you definitely have more control over them uh, than the outcome. Muttering in prayer, the tattooed chieftain scoops palmsfuls of sand into a stout mound. Uh, she leans forward a blow on the mound hard enough to scatter it uh, to the breeze. A smile spreads across her face as a breeze carries due north. I offer amends for the slight of Tatok, great one. A gift of breath and wind for his wasted words. She opens her arms and calls out to the northern horizon. Finally she dusts off her palms and turns to you. Speak up. Unless you're just resting your sea legs. Uh... No. Farewell. Either you lost your mind, woman, or you're just evil. But we gotta talk to you after 
we already had a, a little bit of a talk with the ogres, I suppose. Are we going to drown barrows? What could wait us there? Maybe this is a good time to take a break, so thanks for watching guys and see you next time.